Hey everybody, it's been a while since I've done a video because frankly, life happens with uh, work and financial troubles and deaths in the family, things like that. But I won't get into that. Since the last time I did a guitar collection video, my guitar collection has vastly changed. I'm always um, trading and looking to upgrade my equipment so I'm trying to think I don't think I think maybe I only have one guitar from the last guitar video ah, excuse me one guitar from the last guitar video that I still have and it would be my blue American special strat and my guitar collection isn't as big as it was I had to I got into some financial trouble had to sell some guitars did some trading Anywho, I'm going to go from the cheapest to all the way up to the most expensive guitar. And just because I like watching guitar collection videos, as you know. And hopefully you all dig it. Up first is my 1950s Hammond organ. Oh, wait a second. That's not a guitar. Up first is my Gretsch Streamliner 2622. Um, I wanted to get a semi-hollow guitar, and I went to Guitar Center and tried this bad boy out, and it actually was awesome. So this is my Gretsch Streamliner. It's a uh, semi-hollow guitar, and it's called Walnut Stain. It's really, really cool. The only thing I don't really dig about it is for being a 400 something dollar guitar the quality is insane but the pickups I feel like leave a little something to be desired they um but this is a 400 and something dollar guitar and it's just incredible it's got this like shaped back and um you know and just to piss people off I put this really metal strap on it but this guitar is awesome Definitely recommend the Streamliner series, and this is the 2622. Up next is my American Special Stratocaster. You may have seen this in videos. It's uh, the baby, or it's Sonic Blue. Um, this is a great guitar. I currently have it tuned to E flat. It's not really in tune, but. Uh, I changed the pick guard from the mint green to the white. Let's take a look at that one. My Fender American Special Strat. Haven't really changed anything about this bad boy, the Sonic Blue. Although I did change the pick guard out. Uh, I named this guitar Blue Christmas, so I put some snowflakes on it. At the request of my children. And I could always put the old uh, pick guard back on it. But this guitar is awesome. I keep it in E flat. The trim is blocked off. I'm not really a single coil guy I've come to realize I'm a humbucker guy but yeah this guitar kicks ass next is my Fiesta Red American channel bound standard Telecaster um, you know this one from other videos I put the tortoise shell pick guard on it Let, let's, let's take a closer look this is my American standard channel bound Telecaster in Fiesta Red. The only thing I changed on it was the pick guard. I love the tortoise shell. I think it looks awesome like this. And it's a maple neck. Um, it, the fingerboard is, rosewood fingerboard is it put into the channel bound neck. So it's a, <clears throat> you can see that. It's got a really, really nice satin maple neck. It's an awesome guitar. I love it. It's thick, sounds really thick, and um, it's killer, man. Now we're starting to get a little frisky. Up next, I just got this guitar. I traded a Jazzmaster for it. I had a Mexican classic player Jazzmaster. Just got this. It's a PRS S2 standard single cut. Uh, closer look. I just got this guitar on Memorial Day. It's a PRS S2. Uh, single cut standard. It's in a seafoam green. Sometimes it looks blue. Sometimes it looks green This guitar 
is amazing. I went to the PRS factory a couple of weeks ago and saw that the S2s are made right in the same place that the core line is, or the core line are made. And um, so what happened was I had a Black Star amp that I wasn't really digging that I traded in. Um, I traded a Black Star and a Fender uh, Mexican Jazzmaster that I had that I wasn't really digging. And I traded for this, this is a used guitar, but it's in, you know, practically mint condition. It's a 2014 and it just plays so good and sounds amazing. Even though I think the pickups on these S2s, I believe, are Korean but the rest of the parts are American um, this guitar is just and I'm not one for funky weird colors like seafoam green but I, I just fell in love with the way it played I, I had to snatch it up you all know this next beauty it's my uh, Pelham blue Gibson SG standard closer look up next is my Gibson SG standard in Pelham blue Pelham Blue. This is a great guitar. Plays amazing. It sounds really good. The only thing is, oh, and I put this standard truss rod cover on it, the old school, and I put reflector knobs on it because I think that looks better than the cheap looking black ones it came with. This has that circuit board thing under the tone pots, and when I first got this, it, the the vol or the volume pots just died. Uh, I'd plug it in and you'd touch the volume pot and it would crackle and lose the signal. So I had to fix that. Which really sucks because Gibson's quality control I thought was taking a, a turn and um you know the guitar aesthetically is perfect but it was brand new and just having crackling and stuff under the volume pots just really sucks. But this guitar is awesome. It's very light. It's not neck heavy. I've owned three SGs and this is the nicest one. And now for the twins, my prides, my two prides and joys. Uh, so the Gibson would be cheaper. Up next is a Gibson Les Paul Standard. And as you can tell, I'm watching Chappers and the Captain. Gibson Les Paul Standard Honey Burst Beauty. Let's take a, we're gonna have to take a closer look at this one. This is my Gibson Les Paul Standard. Uh, and it's in Honey Burst. It's got an amazing top on it. I, I handpicked this top just because the flame was a little bit different than my McCarty. And uh, it's amazing. It's got push pull. You can split the coils or do the Peter Green thing, or this is like the, uh, I forget what they call that, but you pull that one and it goes to fully cranked on the bridge pickup. Um, this guitar is amazing. It's a beast. It's very, very heavy. It's got the locking Grovers. Um, and it just, it really uh, is like my dream Les Paul which I have a, uh, a tattoo of a Sunburst Les Paul because growing up, the ultimate, my holy grail of guitars was this guitar, a Sunburst Gibson Les Paul. Lastly, which is probably the nicest guitar I've ever owned. Uh, and being from Maryland, it's a point of pride. It is a PRS McCarty. 594 in McCarty Burst and just amazing we're, we're definitely taking a closer look at this bad boy lastly my pride and joy my Paul Reed Smith McCarty 594 is just an amazing piece of art I mean it I mean look at that flame camera isn't the best but I went to the PRS factory shortly after I bought this and I know some people hate on PRS versus the Gibson and Fender but 
this thing just sounds so good and plays like the best playing, you know, guitar you've ever played. It is not a 10 top, which some of the 10 tops on PRSs I actually don't like. They're just too flamey. And my PRS and my Gibson are about as flame, flamey as I like it. And that is, to me, is just, it's like a, the camera doesn't even do it justice. It's just like a deep uh, flame tiger maple. Um, and it's got the 5815 LT pickups. It just sounds awesome. I recommend everybody get a McCarty 594 if you can afford it. I had to sell my Red Les Paul and my PRS CE 22 to get this, but I don't regret it because, I mean, it combines everything you love about Les Pauls and PRSs, and this also has the, um, you can split the coils, and it's just so awesome. I sound like I'm gushing because I am but it, it's just, it's just killer. You can see my pedal board. Yep. And my Star Wars friends. And my vintage organ. Like I said, my guitar collection really shrunk over the past year. I hope you enjoy. Um, let me see your guitar collection videos. Cause I mean, mine are always changing. I like my lineup I have now though. Lots of different flavors. Enjoy.